Hello everyone, my name is Fanta, and you are watching FantaVision, and today we're talking about retailers and corporations that don't care about you. Tales from retail time, everybody. Tales from retail. We're going to be talking about things that are prevalent in not only the retail sector, but pretty much most sectors out there. And that is the fact that your corporate overlords do not care about you. I have plenty of different examples from retail I'll be giving today. And I'll also be talking about different companies that have just completely proven how little they care about the safety of you and their workers. I want to start out with real quick, of course, hit that like button for the old intro coming back. Hell yeah showing off the beer that 5% of you care about. There it is. Can you can you focus, please? Hell yeah. Santan Moon Juice, because that's the only safe place right now is we need to go back to the moon, start a moon colony there. Now, I always like to ask, what do I mean for some reason in the start of the video? And we're going to do that again. What do I mean that these corporations don't care about you? Well, let's start with the most recent examples. And one of those being GameStop, as I've discussed and Jim Sterling's discussed and Camelot's discussed and Spawn Waves discussed because everybody has discussed GameStop because they were the most publicly lambasted company out of all the different companies recently. And we'll get to a few others that definitely need to be talked about today that have been kind of pushed aside that don't really need to be open but still are because this company has is the only one that has really gone out of their way to say, hey, if local law enforcement tells you to close, don't do that. That is why GameStop, a lot of people are confused. Why is everyone going after GameStop? Because they're the only one saying, hey, law enforcement, nope, don't care, don't do it. But you know what? I got to argue that that was crazy, okay? That behavior was crazy. But an even crazier behavior is coming from Hobby Lobby. And a lot of people have sent me messages about this because they're genuinely worried about their clientele. When was the last time you went to Hobby Lobby? Probably not recently because you're not over the age of 40. That is what their main clientele is. They have much older clientele. And because of that, they're at a much higher risk during this whole situation. So because they're staying open, they're putting their workers, just like GameStop, and their, I mean, much more at risk clientele in danger. I mean, I just, I don't understand what they're thinking especially okay why do you think hobby lobby staying open what is their rationale now we all know gamestop's rationale gamestop's rationale it at least made sense their their rationale was we are going bankrupt we are doing very bad and right now business is very good because people are bored that makes sense is it moral no that's a bad thing bad gamestop but after everybody yelled at them, they finally did what they were supposed to do in the first place. Hobby Lobby is staying open and putting its at-risk clientele in even more danger because God told them to. What? God told them to stay open longer. Excuse me? Run that by me again. The reason you're staying open, open is not to make money because people are bored right now. So you're probably seeing an uptick in clientele as well. It has nothing to do with profit. It's because God told you to stay open. We're on a mission from God. That is insane. I, I cannot even believe that is something that I have read everywhere. I, I, it sounds like a joke. It sounds like something you'd read on The Onion. But that's life nowadays. Life is the onion. Everything that sounds like would be on the onion has happened already. We're living in the onion. And if you don't know what the onion is, it's a, a news website that reports fake news, like on purpose, like in a comedic fashion, kind of goes over the top. And that's, that's why I said this is like the onion. Now, there are some other places that are surprising to me that are still open right now. And that's EB Games. Now, EB Games is still open. I've had a lot of people message me about this that they're terrified and they do not have the same protections that GameStop here is having and the fact that they're just staying open like it's normal. They're acting like GameStop was before everybody threw them 
into the fire like they deserved. But for some reason, EB Games, which is owned by GameStop, is still open and people aren't really calling them out for that. That doesn't make any sense. I, I'm hoping they change their policy soon. Maybe they've po changed their policy since I've made this video. But as of making this video, EB Games is still open as per usual. And that's ridiculous. You are the same company. How are you getting away with this? Whatever the big news organizations are in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, all the places where EB Games is needs to light them up because that is ridiculous. All of these different countries are closing their borders, but these games, these EB Games, I almost said GameStop, it's the same thing. All these EB Game stores are not closing. That's crazy. Game Exchange is not closing. CEX is not closing. Game UK, not closing. Guess what all these places are? Like what I called GameStop. It's a germ factory. I keep saying this. It's a germ factory. It is seriously one of the biggest ways to transmit a disease to somebody else is at GameStop. You're handling all the games on the wall. You're handling all the games for trade-in. You're handling all the money. You're handling everything. Everything has been touched by everybody. Half of your new games are opened. They're not even new in the cellophane. You have touched the disc. You've put it in there. That is now contaminated. Everything is contaminated in that store. It's absolutely insane to me that a place that sells used items is still open. If other places like that are still open, I'd love to know, let me know. I think Bookman's here is still open. Pretty much everything here is still open. It's crazy to me. Bookman's is another place that is like GameStop, but they take in everything. It's like a pawn shop, but less sketchy looking. But the thing is, everybody's thinking about the bottom line. And that's the problem. Everybody's thinking about profit. They're all thinking about money. And money is worth more to companies than their workers. And I've seen this time and time again. There's so many companies out there. Like think about Blizzard, Activision Blizzard. They, they fired what, 500 people? While they were bragging about how well they were doing, they fired 500 people. And then meanwhile, their CEO was raking in the millions. All these different companies, they have the top paid CEOs ever. It's ridiculous to me that how often this happens. How when we saw Iwata cut his paycheck to save workers, that was something out of the ordinary. That's sad. So many people right now are losing their jobs. And you think executives are taking a pay cut? You think the CEOs are taking a pay cut? No. None of these higher-ups that probably have plenty of money in the bank, plenty of stock, oh, stocks aren't really worth anything right now, plenty of other investments, <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of other assets that they are very well off. They can take a pay cut. That's the whole point. That was the whole point of when they moved the executives bonuses and pay in regards to the stock market. If the stock market is doing well, the executives are doing well. If the company's not doing well and they're having to fire people to make up that money, instead the executive should take that pay cut. You can't just keep taking the increases and not taking the decreases. It should go both ways. It shouldn't just go one way. That's ridiculous. But that is what that is what has happened in every single one of these companies. A lot of companies will look down at people for getting an education. I, I have heard this at many different stores. At Walmart. I've heard this at Target. I've heard this at so many different places that they will not make you a manager because you have a degree. Because they know that you're looking for a different job. But... Some of these people aren't looking for a different job and they might be having this job for quite a while because it sometimes takes a long time to find another job. And instead of promoting these people that know what they're doing, I don't know if you've noticed it, when you go to a retail place, the managers are clueless nine times out of 10 because they, they don't have a college education. And I'm not saying that people that don't have a college education are stupid. I'm just saying that maybe allowing people that have gone through this process that have dedicated themselves enough to graduate might be a good idea. Invest in these people that have invested into themselves. But instead, they're just thinking short term. And that's what a lot of these companies do. And that is why our corporate overlords don't care about us. They just simply don't. And you think about this every single day when you're working a retail job. You know that everybody above you does not care. 
all the way just as low as your your area manager in Walmart. Everybody gets this weird power trip as they're climbing the ladder, like they're better than the people below them. And it's just shocking to me. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't register in my brain. When I was a manager or key holder, whatever you want to call it, at GameStop, I didn't see myself as above the, the people below me. I just saw them as my coworkers. I just I wanted to be the kind of manager that I liked. I wanted to be relaxed and as long as you get your stuff done, I don't care. That's all that matters. And it seems like as soon as these people rise the ranks, they stop looking at people like their people. I needed to make this video based off of this because of what is happening right now. Because of how relevant this is. How sad it is that we all had to yell at a company for them to do the right thing. And the thing is, is they didn't even completely do the right thing because GameStop owns EB Games, so they're still doing it in other countries. It's not like GameStop isn't collecting that money. They're still collecting that money from those other stores. I've also noticed that in retail, if you are sick too much, buy. It's that simple. If you get sick too often, they will fire you. This is so messed up for so many reasons because a lot of people... In fact, everybody really can't control their health. You can in some ways. You can have a proper diet. You can exercise. Those are the two things you can do. That's it. But if you do those two things and you just you have a history of medical issues, you're genetically predisposed to lots of different things, sorry, you're going to get fired anyway. I saw so many people at Walmart and GameStop get fired because they were just sick too many times. And it's not as if they were pretending because you could tell when they came in and they were sick. And I would let them go early because they were miserable. They were not having fun. They were not off hanging out with their friends. They were going back to bed. And yet we live in this culture where it is frowned upon to be sick. It's just, it's so crazy to me that we really do this to people. And now we're seeing the effect of that. We're seeing the effect of that culture. If you're sick, come in. You need to come in. Unless you are dying. And even when you're dying, I want a doctor's note. A lot of companies are like that. The thing is, you should care about other people's health. Even for selfish reasons, you should not want people coming in if they're sick. That means other people in your company are going to get sick. It's just, that's, that's how it works. That's how sickness works. It spreads. Look, it's happening right now. Because, and especially in America, it's going to get worse, people. It's going to get a lot worse because of this mindset that you have to come in unless you are vomiting, you can't make it to work, you can't drive. And even then, a lot of times they still want a doctor's note. They want proof. They think you're lying. When... <laughs> It's usually not the employees that are lying. It is nine times out of 10, the company itself that is spewing the lies. There's so many different points where you can find companies lying, breaking the law, dodging taxes, and yet they look at us, the workers, as if we're the ones that are going to lie. So there's some things to think about. Also pregnancy, like in retail, God help you if you get pregnant because they barely work with you. They really do. I've, I've seen so many pregnant people that, oh my God, they went through hell. I mean, they, they had to work when they were incredibly pregnant. I mean, they were in constant pain, just moving. Most of the time they're sitting down. They can't do anything, but they're forced to come in because if they don't, they're getting fired. The only thing I can think of to even solve this issue is if for some reason, higher ups hear this, if executives look inward and go, we need to change our sick policy. We need to change how we think about our workers. We need to treat them as if they are human beings. I don't think that'll happen, but it would be great if it did because it's an, an entire societal shift. I mean, Europe has so much sick leave. They have so much vacation. I mean, I work for an international company and 
it feels like they're always on vacation. Like, oh yeah, they get like three months off. And I'm like, what? I get like two weeks. It's this weird culture we live in. It's a thing that even permeates to YouTube. I mean, I see all the time these people commenting, oh, entitled millennial snowflake. Duh, what a bitch. Have you thought for maybe a second? Well, you probably haven't because you're commenting stupid things on a YouTube channel. But if you think inwardly for a second, why am I defending these companies? What have they done for you? So, like, have, have they given you like a house or something out of kindness? Have they gone, oh, are you okay? Have they tapped you in the shoulder, just helped you out? Or are you just kind of an angry person? Because it's that mindset of, oh, we all need to be breaking our backs for all these companies when they're not even paying their taxes is just mind boggling to me. I don't get that mindset. and I don't think I ever will. So let me know what you think about all this. Let me know what you think about how companies view us. And if you think that this current situation is going to change our society as a whole, do you think we're going to start seeing people get more vacation time or sick leave? I don't know. I unfortunately don't see it making a giant societal leap unless it gets even worse and even then we're going to be going through a lot of hard times before people finally start rising up because there are too many people out there that are not only fine with the status quo but angrily defend it and we need to convert those people that are confused as to what we are all talking about the people that fight for just you know better treatment you think that would be something we'd all strive towards like the video if you guys liked it subscribe for more content and as always have a fantastic day see you guys hope you like the shirt what are you buying i thought that kind of tied in well to tales from retail let me know if, if you can let me know what your local stores are doing i would love to know what your local stores are doing about this whole situation, how they're handling it. Um, if you have any tales from retail, I'd love to start doing viewer stories. I've had a couple people send some stuff in. I want to kind of do a compilation of, you know, one store of different stories. Or if a story is like crazy enough to be its own video, let me know. I look forward to hearing from you all and stay safe.